Here is another technique for money conditioning your mind. You money condition your mind by mentally identifying yourself with the good which you desire. Whatever it is, money or whatever. By mentally identifying yourself with the good which you desire. Learn to mentally identify yourself with money. And you, you should really be money conscious. Sometimes I just marvel at how unconscious the money people are. I don't know about you, but money fascinates me. And you see, here's another thing. Whatever good you desire, you have to love it and be fascinated with it. So write down, become fascinated with money. See, money fascinates me so much that I never, I'll never pass a bank without noticing it. People who have money fascinate me. They always have. There are all these libraries around here, that's another thing that you can do. Go and read about the rich folks. Read about how they got rich. Read about how they lived. And identify yourself with that. See and feel yourself in that same position. Because whatever you become fascinated with will come to you. This is how, for example, a poor boy can become a surgeon. At some point in his life and in his mind, he becomes fascinated with the idea of becoming a surgeon. One of my very good supporters in Los Angeles, California, is a doctor that I'm going to have on television with me at some time, who now performs brain surgery in a hospital where he worked as a janitor when working his way through medical school. And I dare say every janitor in that hospital could become a surgeon if they would become fascinated with the idea. You see, there are two ways in which you can take your so-called negative experience. He could have gone along saying, well, I'm just a janitor. I'll never be nothing but a janitor. But when he saw the surgeons walking up and down the hall with their white coats on, and stethoscopes dangling from their necks. He identified himself with those doctors. He became fascinated. Again, whatever you want to be, to do, and to have, become fascinated with that. Become fascinated with successful people. Buy those town and country magazines. Read about how these people live, what they do and how they do it whatever you become fascinated with you will become you will accomplish and I can't be too redundant about that because here again these sessions are not just simply lectures these are conditioning sessions and I'm deliberately trying to program you and so I'll, I may repeat one sentence over and over again but if you get just one sentence of positive thought in your subconscious mind it will do you unlimited good. This is why I send out these success ideas every month. If you work with these ideas in your mind, you'll get results. All right. Identify yourself with the good which you desire. I've told you this before and it bears repeating again. I remembered when I first came to New York City to work my way through school after I'd graduated from high school back south. I'd never even attended a high school with running water toilets. And I came to work my way through four years of Bible school. And I remember the first time that I was walking along Central Park South, which is an uppity crust neighborhood. <laughs> and it was like a new world to me, looking in through the Austrian shades at the casino on the park, looking in at the candles burning in the Edwardian room, in the plaza, seeing the uniformed doormen standing at the doors. And in those days, uh, Central Park South was just rife with Rolls Royces. 
The majority of Rolls Royces I see down there now belong to me. <laughs> but in those days, I mean that whole area there between 7th Avenue and the Plaza Hotel lined out with Rolls Royces. I'd never seen them before in my life, but I was fascinated by Rolls Royces. See what I told you? They just fascinated, excuse me, the hell out of me. All of this wealth and opulence and all of these people going back and forth into these places just fascinating me. I couldn't, be help, I couldn't help becoming one of them. Because I was fascinated and I identified with that. Now you see, there's another way in which people, some people walk up and down that same strip and what do they do? They curse the rich. Boy, these people, all the people around here starving, look at them. Yeah. All the people in Biafra starving. Look at them sitting up here eating. Here, here. <laughs> like the first of this year out in Los Angeles. I don't know whether you all were stupid enough to do it back here. But in Los Angeles, the churches got together. Some group of churches, council of churches or something. That's why I don't bother with them. <laughs> Said, now all these starving people in the world, let's, let's, let's have a week of sympathetic hunger. <laughs> That's right. To have a week of hunger to sympathize with the starving people in the world. And I just said publicly now, how in the hell is it going to help those other folks starving if I starve with them? You are not going to help the poor by becoming poor. <laughs> Sometime last year also when I spoke at Harlem Hospital and created such a ruckus, <laughs> just as I was standing there, it all came to me in a flash. I was on 135th Street, and the first time that I ever set foot, foot in New York, I lived on 133rd Street, right in the headquarters of the ghetto. <laughs> and so I, I just managed to mention it, you know. And I said, well, you know, I said, this is my, this is my old neighborhood. Uh, this, is the first, this is the first place, first neighborhood I ever lived in when I came to New York. So, Somebody over in the other corner said, hey, is this that way you learn to hustle? <laughs> said to myself, damn it, you better hustle. <laughs> Another lady got up and said, well, says, you know, I don't really have anything to ask Reverend Ike. Says, but you know, I said, I've watched him just like I watched these others come to the ghetto and get rich and move out and leave their followers behind to grope blindly. <laughs> I, was, I was amused because if I was still down on 135th Street stinking with cheap wine, I wouldn't be criticized. See? Nobody criticizes. me. If I was a drug addict, standing in the doorway, sleeping, standing up, 
And I often wonder, what, how could those people sleep standing up? <laughs> See, if I was still down there, if I'd learned all of that rather than learning how to hustle. And I was down there standing in the doorway with needle points up and down my arm. Nobody would have said one damn word of criticism. Except look at that poor black man. Oh, it's just like Art Linklater used to say on his program, people are funny. <laughs> That's why you see you have to overcome people if you're going to be successful. <laughs> That's why Jesus said, I have overcome the world. You have to overcome the world. You have to be sure that you are right. And be honest with yourself and then you'll be honest with everybody else and just get to that point where you don't give a damn what people think or say. Because I often think of that and I thought about that today as I was speaking to the, the gentleman who's editing my autobiography. And see, that's why criticism doesn't bother me. And you're not going to be too successful as long as criticism bothers you. You'll be mediocre, you'll be anywhere from a failure to mediocre, as long as criticism bothers you. And I remember that bothered me up to 1959, when I first started this ministry on $200 I'd saved up from unemployment compensation. So I went south and I wanted to be sure not to uh, have anybody accuse me of wanting money, so I didn't ask for much and didn't get much. I don't want anybody talking about me So I just won't say too much about money But they started talking anyway and I said, damn it, if they're going to talk anyway They're going to pay for it <laughs> I'd rather them talk and I have something Than to talk and I have nothing to show for it. It's just like old Liberace, you know, it said Liberace. Somebody went to Liberace and said, Liberace, did you hear what they're saying about you? They said, yes, I enjoyed, laughed about that all the way to the bank. So you see, you can curse the rich. And you see, as long as you curse the rich, Reverend Ike has told us, as long as you curse the rich, you'll never be one of them. And you see, I could have gone down there on Central Park South, and I could have cursed all those people in those Rolls Royces, and I would have never had them with the first Rolls Royce. And I got fascinated with Rolls Royces, and Rolls Royces won't stop coming into my experience. They just won't stop. Every time I look around, here comes another one. Like, for example, about five years ago, there was one Rolls Royce that uh, we bought for $25,000, and now it's worth from eighty-five to $125,000. See, those Rolls Royces are not just, just money spent. Those are some of the best investments that you can have.